And then your government is going to tell your, your, your family. What they going to tell your family? Well, we are sorry. This stuff cannot be tolerated in our community. They're going to hold a little speech conference and it's going to be over. And so is the life of your loved one. Nah, man, we can't. Listen, man, listen. You, we all would like to live in a world where everyone could be civilized. We would like to live in a world where everyone can be, you know, at peace and at unison with each other. But unfortunately, you know, this is far from the truth. We can't live with peace and at peace with each other. We can't be in unison with each other because if, even when it even come to politics, you know, you got the Democrats, the Republicans, you know, it's, it's a whole bunch of hoopla. You can't even, even politically speaking, we can't even be together. Culturally speaking, we can't be together. Community wise, we are not together. So that's why I shoot down any false movements like we're together. We're not. No one's together. No one is together. Right. And that's the and that in itself tells you we need to be armed. And, I, and, and I'm going to continue to arm myself by in the right way. But I'm not going to. But my perspective was never evil, so I'm not going to stop it. My perspective was I need to arm myself from crazy people. You know that, you know, you know, I'm human like the next man. You know, I might I might say a, a couple extra words, you know, I might, you know, you know, I might let people know I ain't playing from time to time, just like any other human would, you know. But at the end of the day, the foundation is, man, you know, hey, if anybody crazy, they got to go. You know what I'm saying? They, if they're trying to harm me, they got to go. That's the foundation. It ain't, and, and listen, like I said to the gangsters and thugs, we got to stop acting like it's all like this is some cool thing. Because see, kids, when we present being armed as cool, like this is hip and cool, and we talk about it all in the movie, in the music and stuff, and show it in the movies, what happens is with that mentality is kids go from, okay, being armed to wanting to use the arms. And that's where we have the problem. When you make it so appealing to have arms and to have guns to the point where now people want to use them. People want to see how it feels to be a shooter. People want to see how it feels to be a killer. And that's the problem. The mentality it has to change. We got to re, we got to evolve. We can't be like we still in the times of Tupac in the nineties. You still got the hit them up mentality. You still got the hit them up mentality, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on military, like being militant minded, being trained, stop smoking so you can get out here on this battlefield, lose weight so you can get out here on this battlefield, man. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got two packs of Newports, you ain't even got a belt on. You got a gun, but you ain't got a belt on. You got two, you smoke two packs of Newports a day. How are you going to go to war with a physically fit militant person? You can't do it. You're going to be so surprised. You're going to be like, oh, my God, this dude destroyed these guys. You haven't met people like that yet. It's good. Listen, I can't predict the future, but I know eventually, man, you know, there's going to be a clash, man. You know what I'm saying? And I have to be 100. A lot of thugs, a lot of gangsters, you're not ready. You know what I'm saying? Because first of all, you smoke too much. That's the problem. On the battlefield, that's going to take away from you. When you need it, when you need that extra mile to run and shoot, the cigarettes is going to beat you down. And guess what? That may end your life because you couldn't run that extra mile or you couldn't be strategize and move that extra mile. You lost your life because of smoking. First thing first, man. I mean, I know everybody like to smoke weed and like to, you know, smoke cigars and smoke, you know, just and vape and all of that, man. But it's now coming to a time, man, where it's more important to be physically fit for the field. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, you know, you know, it's not even a time where really it's all about getting high anyway, man. Look at the stuff that's going on. 
You got COVID everywhere. You got COVID everywhere. People still forgetting about that. People still dying from COVID every day. You know, and um, it, it, it's just not the time to party like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you can't party. I'm not saying you can't have good, clean fun and stuff like that. But it's more important that your physical body is is intact. You know what I'm saying? Which means you can't be excessively smoking. You can't be smoking at all, in my opinion. And you can't be excessively drinking. And you can't be um, overeating excessively. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got to train your women. You know, also, you know, you know, everybody talking about having a thug girl. No, we're getting past that. We're getting past having a thug girl, thug queen, and all of that. You need, she need, your women need to be trained to shoot and kill, okay? Most women, you can get them, the average woman, okay, they got little wrists. They got little wrists, you know, they can't shoot big guns. You can start women out with 380s, 38s, 25s even. Nice little pearl handle 25. She can put that right in the bag. It'll take somebody out. That's the bottom line. If you shoot the kill, you got to start shooting the kill. You can't When you pull it out, you can't be like, oh, I don't want to kill that person, but I'm going to shoot him. You can't do that. You got to start shooting the kill, man. This is this this is what separates warriors from from everybody that talks about it, man. You know what I'm saying? Now you're looking at me as a dangerous individual, and all I am is a person who speaks about being armed and how to go about it. I mean, I mean, you either are about it or you're not. You when you go get guns that's registered, you have to be able to be trained to know what you're doing. You have to have the mentality to arm to 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 bring harm, bodily harm on someone that's trying to bring bodily harm on you. You trust in the Lord, of course. But just in, like I like to say, just in case some demons get through the cracks, you got something for them. Just in case a devil, Satan tries to push demons through the power that God has around you, then you got something for that. What's wrong with that kind of perspective? And I'm not the typical armed man meets Jesus kind of people. There's people out there like that. They got the they got the leather jackets with crosses on the back. You know, no disrespect. But but I'm but I'm trying my best to also live righteous for real. I'm not just uh you know Jesus on the sideline and I'm just really a militant armed man. I mean, no, nah, it's not like that. I'm more of a spiritual militant than a physical militant. Cause I've learned with the wars that I fought that being a spiritual militant is more powerful. It gets the job done. And now the community real realizes that through my life and I give God the praise. People are starting to realize, Hey, you know, spiritual militants are no joke. Yeah, I know. Now you realize why everybody's going to church because it's real. And so are spiritual militants. We're real, bro. And, and you may say, you may call us radicals. You may not like how we act, but guess what? Look how you act. Do anybody, you think somebody should like how you act? That's what you think about it. That part. You just as nasty and cruel and wicked. And, 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 you, and here you are pointing out how somebody else is acting. You an eavesdropping bastard. And, and you and you and you and you expect somebody to you you the one trying to uh, be the commentary for how people are acting. You're the commentary for how the community is acting, and you an eavesdropping bastard. That part, nobody ain't trying to hear from you. I arm myself with people like you. You shouldn't be listening to me. I don't know what's wrong with you. I feel the need when people. I feel like people are eavesdropping. To go arm myself. Yeah, I don't know what you thought. Hey, maybe you come, maybe you're super ghetto. You this is the new ghetto to be so eavesdroppy. Well, maybe I come from old school ghetto. 
Where if I don't know you and you know me, I'm going to arm myself. If you know me and I don't know you, I'm arming myself. If you're talking about me and your politics, I am definitely arming myself. And this is how collisions get started all the time. You know what I'm saying? People ignorant, thinking you good. You think you good doing the things you're doing. And some people ain't playing. And they're willing to die for it. That's the difference. Like, you know, you're willing to play around with it till you're done, until it gets too scary, until it gets too, you know, dangerous, and then you're ready to let it go. You're ready to tap out. And some people ain't will, ain't going to tap out at all. They're going to go all the way. And that's why, I, I listen, that's why thugs and gangsters and militants don't have any problems with each other. It's like opposing countries, real superpowers. You don't see China really trying to go to war with America like that, do you? You don't see Russia trying to go to war with China, do you? Because it's an understanding that if we go to war, it's a problem. The people that you see starting problems in your society are knuckleheads. They're knuckleheads. They're not even, they're not even, they don't even think like this. You know what I'm saying? They're knuckleheads. They're not going to go all the way in. They're going to go to the point where they tap out. And, and when stuff get hard and it get dangerous, now they want to tap out. Now you want to go to 7-Eleven and have comfort food. That's a 7. Out. You want to go to com- you want to go to 7-Eleven and get a uh and get what get get you a icy, get you a Slurpee and get some pizza. Now you want to tap out of the war. And, and and your enemies that's really about this life ain't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like so you gotta understand, man. You know, you wanna change things. You want to uh, you want to tap out when it's convenient for you, when you get scared and when it's getting when it's getting dangerous. And now you want to say we're a danger to your public. Well, you was a danger in the first place. You was a danger in the beginning initially. And you don't have the convenience of um, the luxury of playing with fully grown men and thinking you get to walk away. God is not going to let you walk away. You don't have to worry about it. You can use the police. You can use whoever you want. God is not going to let you walk away. That's all. You can act like you're some little fraternity, college fraternity. He's bothering us. But you know you play games that's worthy of death. And that's why that's why I'm telling you the American culture and community has to become to terms with the fact that, you know, some people have to die. You know what I'm saying? It may not be the same set of people, the same set of issues, but if they're being relentless in a fashion that is dangerous for the community, then they have to be neutralized as targets. No different than the Civil War. In the Civil War, the Confederates would not give up their oppression on the African Americans. So they had to be neutralized as a target. And, and I can't stress this enough. You are not civilized beyond that perspective. You think you are. You have synthetic, civilized, sophisticated ways, but it's not real. It's not truly the real situation in your community. The bottom line is there's people that still, they, they are like confederates, that must be neutralized. You're in a you're in the second civil war, and now you have to come to terms with how it must be handled. I know it's unfortunate. It's been a long time since this happened, but we are here again. In my perspective, we're in a place where bloodshed is the only way, because for whatever reason. You know, people feel that they're going to be relentless and persistent and God is not having it. Okay, you know, people think it's a game and it's a civil war on the horizon. That's not going to be a game, buddy. That's not going to be a competition. That's not going to be a contest or any other word that you got for it. That's going to be all out destruction. While you're talking about contests and competitions. That's I mean, that's I'm dead serious. You know, and and you're not going to get the change in your community just oh, in general. You're not going to get the change that you want 
um, without bloodshed, man. Because what you what you don't realize is, like I told you, and I can't stress this point enough either. There's militant white racist militant people that's out there that has real that have real militias, real arm, real AK 47s real SKSs, real AR 15s, real 12 gauge pumps. You know what I'm saying? They got plenty of rounds and plenty of clips for anybody that want problems. And they ain't gonna sit up and talk hip hop to you. I gotta say it like this, bro. They ain't not gonna sit up and play hip hop games and you try to act tough like you a rapper, you're gonna get shot in the face, man. That's what I'm saying. And, and they not listen. They're gonna wait till you are aggressive and you're gonna die. And 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 look, I'm not like them. As far as philosophy goes. I feel like, you know, honestly, in my opinion, I don't give any race of people that much that much space in my life and head. And I don't give any race of people that much energy. So anyone that would call me a racist would be flattering themselves because I really don't focus on you like that. I focus on problems. That's a seven. And if you happen to be a problem, then I'm going to address you. You see the difference? I address problems. <clears throat> Racist people address races. They address ethnicities without them doing anything. Just because you're a certain ethnicity, you're getting addressed. If you pay attention, I'm addressing you because of the stuff you're doing. That's not racism. And if you're too simple-minded to see that, and too simple-minded to see the problems that's in your community, and too simple-minded to see who's really causing it and trying to make it something that it is, something other than what it is, then, then listen, man, you're going to be left behind. You're going to be left behind trying to be uh, civilized and sophisticated. When other people are barbaric, when you see kids being killed, you see people just shooting at the drop of a hat, shooting anybody at the drop of a hat, that's barbaric. It's already here in your community. It's already here. You just, it just haven't affected your family yet. That's what it is. When it affects your family, you're going to feel it. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. It's going to burn bad. It's going to burn bad. But until you get the news that somebody's been shot in your family, you're, gonna, you're not going to sympathize. You're desensitized. That's why I keep telling you. That's the word for next year. You are desensitized to the killings in, the, in your community. In your community, you have no, you're, you're, you're not sensitive to it. You see it and you don't see it. You see it, but it goes through you. It goes in one ear, not the other. You're losing superstars to this foolishness. You're losing rap stars to this foolishness. People that are, that are out the streets for the most part. And people should not be so simple-minded. You know they're out the streets. They're making music. Okay, they might, you know, flip a little something here and there. I'm pretty sure they do. They're from the streets. They might flip a little something. But at the end of the day, they really, they really doing music. They kind of out the way, right? For the most part, they're out the way. But it's jealousy. You know what I'm saying? It's ego. It's people that feel like, you know, you think you you think you're tougher than them, and you ain't even you ain't even insinuating it. They, they already have a complex that because you are a rapper, you, you, you know, if you say anything, they own it. They feel a need to defend themselves. It's an ignorance. It's ignorance. When you should already see, okay, that person kind of out the way. I'm going to ignore that because that's kind of, that person ain't even in, out here. That person ain't even out here hustling and, and whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how real that's how real criminals think. That that's that's nothing, man. That person ain't even out here. We out here. We out here in the wild, man. You know. And if that person ain't out there like that, then then you, you should have let you should let them be. You should let you should let these rappers and singers, whatever have you, these entertainers, let them be. But that's not the case. And so, like I said, man, it's a catch twenty two. All of this is a catch-22 because you, you try to be for the community, but you can't be for the foolishness. It's like I always tell people, it's like 
you have a form of uh, uh, cultural schizophrenia here. You know, you can't be for white people totally, but you can't, but you can't be against them because some of them are good people. You can't be against black people totally, but you can't be for them totally either, man, because it's just too much going on. So it's like it's like a form of schizophrenia when you address it, these issues. OK, you want to be for black people, but you can't be all the way. You can't because it's too much going on. And you already know that. Same thing with white people. You know, you see good white people. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? They seem nice and sweet. But you but you but you can't be for all of them when you see all these white militias and you see all this other stuff going on. So it's like a form of schizophrenia. Like I want to be for them, I'm for the black people, but I can't be. Look at this, what they're doing, but I love them. Look at this, but we would need to help them. You know, it's like <laughs> that's what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Until you understand what I just said. You're going to be a simple-minded person. You're going to die a simple-minded person. I'm telling you. That's exactly how it is. It's no better. It's no other way to look at it because that's how it is. You know what I mean? And, you know, all these thugs and gangsters and all of this, you know what I'm saying? They sit up like fat cats over the community. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't hating. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying... You know, with all that power you got, all that military, all that all that that mentality to shoot and kill and all of that, won't you won't you won't you put it in the right direction towards the people that's really oppressing you? Won't you do it to the people who oppressed you the whole time? You know what I'm saying? Won't you choose the bigger adversaries in 2022 going into 2023? Won't you choose bigger adversaries than the dudes down the block? A lot of y'all getting ammo, you getting clips, you getting extra good clips and everything. And you ain't getting them for nothing but for people down the block. You ain't getting them for nothing but for, for, for people around the way. You you have you you don't even have it in your mind to fight against the oppressors. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be 100. It's more a white boy thing. It's more a white boy thing, culturally speaking. A white a, a white boy is more likely to go to war with the oppressors than the black guy. The black guy is not going to go on the average. He's not inclined to go to war with the oppressors. He's not inclined. I mean, look at him in action. Okay. A police officer shoots somebody. I made this example earlier. A police, a police officer shoots somebody. He goes down the block where his grandma used to work, tear down the store where his grandmother used to work. She don't work there. Your auntie don't work there. You had a part. He even had a part-time gig there. Now he's tearing it down. Now they can't recover. Now that business is gone. Now someone else moves in. And now it's working in your community who you don't even like and care about. And, and, and you know, and you tear up your own situation why don't you go over into the neighborhoods of, I'm not saying do it, but you know what I mean. You can't be simple-minded listening to me. I'm not saying do it, but you would think that you would go over to the neighborhood where the police officer lives. Go go tr- make his life miserable. You know what I mean? Go make his, Go make it hard for him to get a coffee. Go make it hard for him to get some food. Go make it hard for him to get the, the convenience, to have the convenience of uh, this or that and the third around his neighborhood. Won't you go make it hard for him to have luxuries and conveniences? But instead of doing that, guess who you make? Guess guess who luxuries and conveniences you take away? You take away the very people who are oppressed. I'm talking about in a riot. In a riot. When there's a riot, that's what happens. When there's a riot, You oppress the oppressed. And many of you become scavenger birds. The white man can't tell you nothing. All he can say is, we will not tolerate this. That's all he can say. Because as soon as he say it like I'm saying it, you offend it. So it has, unfortunately, in America specifically, it has to be someone you esteem 
as of Africa, uh, there is one of your own and or someone of African descent, whichever one, both are just one. The person is of African descent, black like you. They got a, they got they got rights to talk about it. It takes one like that because the white man can't say nothing to you. If he starts saying you acting like scavenger birds, going and, and, and clucking around and taking taking the clothes and taking the stuff, and you ain't got no intentions of a revolution, you ain't got no intentions of mourning that person. You just taking full advantage. I know how the streets think, man. Come on now. <laughs> you can't fool me. You can fool the white man. You can't fool me. I know how. I know. You look, man. As soon as everybody starts, something happened. Everybody start the hood know. Oh, man. They putting up their blunt and they going and looting, man. They get everything. Everything to hustle later. They get everything. Milk, baby milk, all formula. They going after all of that. People selling formula on the streets now. <laughs> hey. Selling diapers. Selling clothes. Selling shoes and everything. You know, and then can I say I don't blame you? I can't because I understand the mentality and some people just don't even care. You know, it's just like they don't even, they just too focused on hustle. That's that's just, when it comes their way like that, it's just, and they do it every day, it's just, boom, it's just second nature. But, but for, I'm not giving them a pass, but for, for other people, you are not a hustler on the streets every day. That's the seven. A lot of them people that's out there looting, you are not no bona fide hustler or booster. You ain't boosting every day. And some people that do boost, boost, they boost every day. I've been around people like that. Out in California, I was around people like that. They boost every day. <laughs> For real. And me, I'm not that, I'm not that type. I'm not a booster. I don't like getting up in the morning and have to go to the grocery store and get and boost. You know what I'm saying? Go to the freak, go to a fast food place and boost and boost. I'd rather hustle. You know, I'm I'm more of a hustler than a than like than anything, you know. I just rather find a product or something or, or something like that. You know, or some way hustle up money instead of going and taking something. You know what I'm saying? But you're not that type of individual. A lot of y'all are not boosters and 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 and, and you're not even bona fide criminals. You just go out there, you just ratchet. And when that situation happens, you totally ignore the real problems at hand. And you act like we getting out here, we're, we're, we're doing it, we're, we're, we're out here, you know, because these police did what they did. No, you ain't. Come on, who you fooling? You out there taking advantage of the whole situation. That's what it is. And unfortunately, you're doing it in your neighborhoods. You're not doing it in the white neighborhoods. You know how much better stuff you can get? <laughs> but see, that's what separates the men from the boys and the girls from the women. Because if you really was about that life of getting, getting some real good stuff and justice, both of them, then you will then you would take that trip and go get and go get it in somewhere where it's where they off guard. In them rich neighborhoods, they are totally off guard, man. They're totally off guard. They ain't even ready for none of that. I'm just saying. Forgive me if I think like a criminal a little bit. <laughs> they're not. They're not on guard for that. That would. They would be blindsided by that. You know what I'm saying? But instead of doing that, you're gonna you're gonna hit the side of town. That 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 if the police is already patrolling. They just got to get it under control. They already know what you're doing. They just don't want to step in it themselves because it's too dangerous. <laughs> you know, they you know it, it can't win like that. It's just too many people from all different angles. You don't know who got guns and who you don't know who brought guns out there. You know they can't address that. They have to wait for military to come in. You know to bring some type of order, or they have to they have to position to formate themselves in the riot formation. You know, which takes time. It takes briefing, time, knowing who they got to be briefed. They can't just run out there. 
in riot gear. They have to be briefed on where to go and, and how to handle it and all of that. You know, a whole mission, basically. This is what you guys got to understand, man. This is what you got to understand. You know, and uh, so you another one that, you know, you're not facing your greatest adversaries. When stuff happens, you're not facing your greatest adversaries. You're not rising up against the oppressors. You're, you're, you're oppressing the oppressed as well. And you would think, like I said, in this place and time, by now, you would have seen thugs, real certified thugs and gangsters rise up against the powers that be in some type of rebellion or uprising would have happened by now. It hasn't happened. We people talk about it, but it hasn't happened because I, what I feel personally is they just, for the most part, they just simmered down and got out the way, and they just start focusing on, you know, family and that's it pretty much. You know what I'm saying? People stop focusing on the outward world, but it always comes to bite you in the butt when you do that. You can you can't be oblivious to what's going on, you know, and this is no disrespect, but this is what the Mexican community is going to learn because they come here either from Mexico or they born here and they stay in their own communities and they're about their families and that's cool. But unfortunately in America, you can't, you can't, that's not that, that way of life is not going to work. What's going to happen. You're going to find out that wars and, 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 and things have happened that you was not aware of. And you're going to wake up one day in full Armageddon, totally oblivious to what's happening because you chose to be out the way. You chose